there's a lot of discussion about the future of oil, so let's talk about it. Globally, we consume 96 million barrels of oil every day. This is the same as 48 super tankers of oil every 24 hours. So what is all that oil used for? Well, we as consumers, we use almost all of it. If you take a barrel of oil, 42% of it will be turned into gasoline for our commuter vehicles. 28% will be turned into diesel, which runs our commercial fleet, including trucks, trains, and barges used in transporting goods. 12% is split between fuel oil and aviation fuel for heating and travel, respectively, and the last 18% is used for asphalt, petrochemicals, and plastics. Oil has no substitute. Renewable energy, nuclear, coal, none of them can create the gasoline, jet fuel, or asphalt that runs our communities. Understanding the future of oil demand ultimately means understanding the future of population. Let us explain. Canada is a part of a group called the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or the OECD, made up of Canada, the US, most countries in Europe, and a handful of others, which are what we often refer to as developed nations. The OECD has 1.3 of the 7.2 billion people on Earth, and we are by far the biggest energy users. However, our population is stable, and we are becoming more efficient with our energy use. The developing world is a little different. While China has settled out at about 1.4 billion people, or five times the population of America, the rest of the developing world is still growing. India, who already has 1.3 billion people, is estimated to add another 300 million people by 2040. The rest of the world, including Latin America, the Middle East, Asia, and Africa, who already have 2.9 billion people, will add a further billion and a half people in the same period. This means that in the developing world, it is likely that an additional 1.7 billion people will be added, totaling 7.3 billion in the developing world alone. In developing nations, people are moving into big cities, gaining access to electricity, and buying their first cars. Each person in the developing world is estimated to increase their energy by more than 60% by 2040 as they move towards a standard of living the developed world has enjoyed for decades. Of the 96 million barrels of oil produced today, it's split about half and half between developed and developing nations. A quarter century from now, in 2040, as the OECD countries become more efficient with energy use, oil demand is projected to go down from 46 down to 38 million barrels per day. That's a reduction of 8 million barrels of oil per day. In contrast, developing nations, who currently use 41 million barrels per day, are projected to use 26 million more by 2040, totaling 67 million barrels per day as the result of increased urbanization. Combined, this means over the next 25 years, despite a wide adoption of the electric car in wealthy countries and increased energy efficiency around the world, the global demand for oil will likely go up by another 18 million barrels per day until about 2040, where it is expected to level out and start to decline. In other words, growth in population and increased urbanization will outpace the electric car and energy efficiency for oil consumption. These are projections from the International Energy Agency, the gold standard of energy models. The biggest unknown for the future of oil demand is the rise of the electric car. There is a wide range of opinions on the speed that our society will adopt this transformational technology. Some believe that in as little as 15 years, the majority of our cars will be electric, displacing much of our oil use. Others are more skeptical at how quickly the entire global vehicle fleet will be able to make this transition. While it might be unsettling for many, oil consumption will increase for years to come. While public efforts to reduce our dependency on oil often target oil producers or pipelines, it's important to understand that oil consumption is driven by consumer demand. History has shown over and over that targeting the producer of high demand products has little to no effect on curbing consumption. Instead, the capacity for change lies within us, the end user, in changing our consumption behavior to move towards a low emission future. Energy Minute's goal is to foster science-based conversations about energy. If you liked our video, please hit like, subscribe, and send us your feedback. We would love to hear it.